You know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not. What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shells. Brian, Star Wars franchise um, has had some conflicting news regarding Kevin Feige's project being in development. There was also word that uh, the Star Wars celebration was supposed to be, Brian, this is what I heard, that this was supposed to be her fail, farewell. This was supposed to be her swan song and she threw an audible. The plan just changed. Brian, what is your take on all the things surrounding Kathleen Kennedy? Um, she just won't go away. What is what? What's your what are your thoughts? Yeah, my take is she got to go. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's, that's straight up. I mean, I think. How do they how do they get rid of her though? But it's mind boggling. Yeah, no, this is like this is. I mean, this is like the the Seinfeld where they couldn't fire George Costanza, and he's crawling through the vents, and he's like calling his boss, and he's like, "I'm back in my office." I mean, that's that's what this is. Like she. So the rumor now is that this movie with Ray and possibly Finn coming back is not something that Disney actually greenlighted but actually is a movie that Kathleen Kennedy basically rushed to Star Wars Celebration as a way to prolong her tenure. Your move. And once it was all announced, like apparently the, the, the company all, all the way up to Iger was like, huh? <laughs> so, so, if that, first off, if, if that seems almost impossible, but like if that actually happened in a public forum, like how does the person responsible for that possibly keep their job? Yeah. I mean, and this goes to, you know, we, we have a couple of shows that we've been talking about Star Wars that are that have yet to come out. But like this is why this stuff is why when they had Star Wars Celebration, I just looked at all the film things and kind of was like, yeah, let's wait and see. Like mm -hmm. some of it sounds interesting, but we've been here before. And to your point, in 2019, they publicly announced Kathleen Kennedy publicly announced the Kevin Feige backed Star Wars film. Yes. And then at this year's celebration, pretended like it never happened. Wow, she did a Michelle Pfeiffer I've never been in Greece too type of situation. <gasps> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like what? like I don't even know how you can with a straight face look at the interviews and be like, yeah, that, that movie was never in development. You announced it publicly. Like this is a wow. publicly traded company. You announced it in front of the shareholders and, and, and the world you were gonna do. It. Like, don't act like it didn't exist. Like, so who knows what's going on? All I know is that there's too much disarray here for this to continue. Yeah. And if we find out that they have to walk back the Ray Finn project after this, I mean, that would actually be the fitting nail in the coffin to this ill-fated final trilogy, wouldn't it? That like they actually try to resurrect the characters and then the movie doesn't even get out of the starting box because it was like a renegade project. Yeah, yeah. But Brian, I, I, I would ask you, what is your sort of, uh, if you had to give a timeline as to what events will occur in the next six months regarding her position as head of Lucasfilms, what are you, what, what's your take on uh, how long she lasts? Because if you're, Brian, what do you think is happening here? I think she's just maneuvering. She's strategizing. But analyze, strategize, succeed. And like nothing happens in a vacuum, right? And it's like, we, you could say that this situation is not at all related to the Victoria Alonso situation, but it is. It's the same parent company. They they made Victoria Alonso the fall person for what was going on in the MCU. They very conveniently, they must have paid her a bag. I'm telling you, they, they, they got her settled and under the rug in like weeks when her lawyer was threatening to go scorched earth over that that firing. So. They clearly want that to go away. But like, you know, if you're Kathleen Kennedy, you quit sitting there saying, okay, well, I'm the other big female creative in the room. Yeah. 
I'm gonna make I'm gonna step into that vacuum try to seize some power or like cement my place so they can't do that to me and it you know it 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 has the feel of like yeah she's trying to entrench herself by making some moves that just make it harder for them to extricate themselves from her and like Kathleen Kennedy's been I mean she was a producer on the on the Indiana Jones trip like she has been around for Ever, right this is not somebody who's like a rookie like she knows how to play politics just as well as anybody out there but so, Brian I don't know what you've heard about Indiana Jones but I haven't heard good things no I, I think the hype for that's very low right now as well and the story I've heard is not exciting the story I've heard makes me very basically like I'm like really this is how you want to go out so let me say this. so let me let me let me suggest this I mean when is this movie supposed to be coming out Indiana Jones uh June June. We haven't heard, we haven't seen a lot. Is it possible that MCU, oh, not MCU, Disney could be like, uh, let's not market this one that crazy. Let's, let's let it, let's, let's, let, let's let it tank. And then, you know, be like, yo, look at these numbers. We can't have this. You're out. Well, is um, that scenario possible? That's interesting. I mean, I think. Well, first off, they, I don't think they would. I don't think they put the pedal on the metal for marketing until after Guardians Three comes out. The same same company, obviously. So, but I, I, frankly, I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, like again, crowded marketplace. If flash hype is real, like things like that, Indiana Jones just doesn't seem like it's. It's weird because like I just went to Disneyland recently, and Indiana Jones the ride is still one of the most popular things there. The lines there were as long as any other ride, but. Mm-hmm. I just don't get the sense that this film has really gotten people excited in the way that Crystal Skull, honestly, like got people excited that this character was coming back. The trailers have looked increasingly weak, quite honestly. And the story that I'm hearing where like really Phoebe Waller-Bridge is kind of carrying this movie and is ultimately rumored to become the new Indiana Jones at the end of it is sort of like, who who wants to see that? Who's supposed to be in it? Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. She's the one who was a star of Fleabag on uh, on Amazon, and then oh. she kind of helped. Um, she helped kind of co-write No Time to Die. Um, so like you know, she's she's successful. She's smart. Like she's a good writer. But like this idea that like we need to hand off the the hat and the whip. We don't need to do that. It's not clear that this movie needed to happen at all. Other than Harrison Ford was like, I just don't want to go out in Crystal Skull. But it doesn't feel like this movie's going to let him ride off into the sunset with anything better. Yeah. If anything, this franchise should have just been rebooted, you know, and tell a different story. This this, this is a character that lends itself to that. Yeah. But you should have known. We should have known. Like when when Spielberg asked off being the director, we should have known. Yeah. That that probably was the moment where you. And even like James Mangold is a good director, but like. For Steven Spielberg to say, I don't want to see this thing to the end yeah. probably was the sign of like he didn't he he saw that this wasn't going to be, you know. Yeah. Brian, ended. what did you think of the final episode of Mandalorian? You know, it's tough. I thought it was I thought there were parts of it that were excellent. Yes. Uh, I yes. thought like as, as as like I I loved the the aerial fight scene. Nice. I was like that's cool. Ooh, that was... Good ideas there. Like yeah. I like that. I'll live with that. But you know, it had a little bit of it, it because the previous two finales had had such big reveals and kind of big surprises. There, it felt a little bit of a letdown that it was kind of you know almost so straightforward. It felt over. It, yeah, it did. Right. Like it almost <laughs> felt like it was like well, at least Sick. like it felt like this whole chapter had kind of been completed. Yeah. So yeah, it, it felt a little bit more limited than I expected. Like, I thought Thrawn would make some kind of cameo in some form, yeah. something to really hook you yes. into the next leg. And I didn't yeah. really feel like we got that. You're right, we got more closure. Brian, what did you feel after the Dark Sable was destroyed? Cheated. Yes, exactly, exactly. I was like, all this for that? Like, why is it in the show then? I hate. I hate when MacGuffins get put into shows and then it's clear that the writers don't really know what to do with it. <laughs> so they just take it off the board. That's right? That's clearly what happened. Like yeah. I don't really know why what and like maybe we should have known. Like when it became 
when it became so easy for this thing to pass, like when he just gave her the dark saber, basically on a technicality during the season, we should have known that like they were struggling to come up with like a reason for this thing to exist. But what I feel like they left on the table was what started in season two, which was his learning to use it. I was very interested in that. Yeah. And they just ignored that entirely. He just carried it in his pocket the entire time. For me, I thought that was an opportunity from for uh, the Mandalorian to learn from Grogu. Yes. But these dudes keep missing, man. Little layups, yeah, I'm missing layups, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know, Brian. It just felt, I, I don't know, I don't know. So, I thought the Grogu thing too, like you could feel at the end of the season that they know that the Grogu trick is kind of running, wearing a little thin. That was my opinion. Like, it's still interesting. There's still backstory there that I want to explore, but like. Kind of the gimmick with him in the droid saying no 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 like that very much felt like we need to come up with another cute yeah. kid friendly way yeah. for him to be involved that isn't just cooing and ooing and eyeing and i was like that usually is a sign that like you're running out of ideas for the character in yeah. this form yeah my thoughts brian on grogu is that we know this dude is powerful you could have done, I mean, they had an opportunity there, Brian, to not even show us anything or have the Mandalorian save Grogu. It could have been, it would have been dope for me if Mandalorian opened the doors and do, and these dudes are all laid out and, 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 and Grogu's just standing there. It would have given me a little bit more intrigue. We don't have to see him do anything, but... Obviously, we, we can't see him always do this. And then, you know what I'm saying? We can't see him do the same tricks. But so one thing they've forgotten that I thought would, was going to be really interesting is remember in season one, he used the dark side. He choked yeah. Cara Dune. Yeah. And I was waiting for in this like sequence. I was like, why not give him a little bit of that? Like, why doesn't he flash his anger and actually use a like a lightning or like use a dark side power yeah. where you're like, oh, he's actually not fully healed or whatever is like i feel like that's been missed because the almost because the character has become so popular with kids yeah. that they don't want the character now to, to change be like yeah. ambiguous yeah but they ha they have to tease that they have to tease that and they, they're just doing a horrible job at doing that because he can't for the next few years or the next iteration of the mandalorian or wherever they're going to he can't still be a kid yeah, I mean, the analogy actually, like, it's a little ham handed, but I think, like, James Gunn clearly understood that about Groot, which is why Groot always changes size and age uh -huh. and demeanor. That's uh -huh. why that happens, right? Uh -huh. He understands at least that, like, if I show you the same exact gimmick every time, it will lose its effect. But it will like, lose it its effect, Brian. Just, just, and not to go on a tangent, if you go to, if you listen, if you watch the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, it's the same We Are Groot stuff. I am Groot. I am Groot is the same stuff. I get it. But at least he's trying, like, this was swole Groot, right? Like, yeah, he's yeah, trying yeah, to give yeah. you, like, this baby Groot, this teenage Groot, this fully grown Groot. So it, it, when you have a character that doesn't really speak, yeah. which neither Groot nor Grogu do, you need to come up with other ways to give them dimensions. Um, there were some people waiting for Grogu to speak. I, I thought he was going to speak. I think it's coming. I mean, he's clearly capable of it in some form. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, that last episode of The Mandalorian and what you think of Kathleen Kennedy. Like, I mean, Filoni, oh. Filoni and Favreau, that's the other thing. Filoni and Favreau are sitting right there. They're waiting for the like, call, yo. You've got the, you've got the <laughs> like, this is not like Marvel where it's like, okay, we fire Kevin. That's great. Then what? Like, Man. Star Wars, like, we got the dudes. They're right they're in right the building. There. They're ready. To, they're ready, yo. They're ready. And this chick is there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that out, but you know, but it's like she's she 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 she, she doesn't disappear. She just oh snap! To hear the that the possibility that the Star Wars celebration was supposed to be her send off, and she said no. <laughs> but she pulled the door to Belfer. She got, the show goes on. <laughs> she, 
That's what she did. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm not leaving. <laughs> That's exactly what she did. Oh, snap. Uh, we'll have to open that one up with that, yo. Oh, man. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Uh, I, I think we are all waiting for that announcement for John Favreau, Dave Filoni. I'm pretty sure they're waiting for it as well for that announcement to be made because it's about time. Um, it's crazy what's happening. But A, she's trying to get as much as she can out of this before it's all over. Because she knows she sees the end you know um and and she's taking advantage of 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 what what she's given and trying to extend this for as long as possible but uh, the wildest rumor i heard to come out of this controversy uh -huh. was there someone floated the idea that disney would actually look to sell the ip which i can't see just given the rise in the merchandise and all that nah, sort of stuff nah. but god i would love to find out what apple or amazon would bid for Star Wars, if it went on the block, so and that I, I mean, the fact that that even got mentioned, I guess, probably speaks to the chaos that seems to be going on there right now. Yeah, because that would seemingly be the end of K Kathleen Kennedy for sure, for sure. But I, 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 I think it was just more like, let's see what she says if we say this. <laughs> 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 it's that kind of game it's that kind of game brian uh but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this and uh, hit that like and subscribe share with your friends and comment in the comment section below and we'll see you next time on the nerd gym report the show goes on yeah!